Of course, not the only player to draw up plays. We saw the entire Warriors uh, starters do it earlier this season. We have seen our friend Scotty Pippen drawing up plays for MJ back in the day in Chicago. Oh, still on Draymond, because, you know, can't get enough Draymond. Here we go, Scotty and MJ. T-Mac, does it tell you that these guys are invested when this happens? What do you like about it? I, I like that they are invested. Um, and I like that they're also having fun as well. And, and even with the Knicks, you know, it's been a rough season. <laughs> these guys are still finding some way to have a good time out there. It was a good play that he drew up. Um, lost in overtime, but hey, Trey Burke is a player. I don't know if Cantor is down with the play. Look at that. Look at that face. But I give him credit. He called the play for Trey Burke, who was riding hot last night. So he, he knows how to get the ball. There you go. Get the ball to the hot hand. Your college teammate. Trey, Trey Burke did score 42 points against the Hornets, so it's not like it was an insight that he was the hot no, that's hand. True, but but did, it was they, impressive they that he was the hot hand. Last week. Because he is continuing to resurrect his career. 12 assists that puts him in elite company over the last 50 seasons. Only three other Knicks have posted 40 and 10 in a game. Two Hall of Famers. Wow. Bernard King. Okay, Trey. Clyde. As well as the great Stefan Marbury. So. Like, what? What's, was he in the G League? Trey? He was out of the league. He was definitely out of the league. Who was doing this? Be... Who was doing a scouting yeah, around here? Like <laughs> this kid comes to your team and he drops forty-two and ten. Tracy, he was a high lottery pick who, you know, kind of washed out in Utah, and then he's washed out with several other teams. He's one of these guys, you know, he doesn't shoot well from the outside historically, and he's a little small for the NBA game. He's kind of in another era. He might have been a different player, sure. and you know, the thing about it is though. They drafted a guy in the lottery this year to be their point guard. Then at the trade deadline, they traded for another point guard, and neither of them were named Trey Burke. The fact that he's, the fact that this question is being asked, is kind of an indication of how the Knicks. You know, when I watch him, hmm. not only his game reminds me. Say it, say it, say it. But this dude looked like AI Thank out you. there. Thank you. I knew it. Thank well, you. Real, look they at were saying you. on the broadcast last night they were just starting to nickname him AI. Which he kind of looks like, like AI with, with, with the, the hair. It. Say yes. It. Any AI he, he, the, the arm sleeve. Come on, Trey. No, nah, he he has a future with them. You think that you think? I mean, as Brian said, they've got okay. They got Frank Nilakina, Trey Burke. Okay. How crowded is that point guard spot? But here's the thing: there's not that many teams out there that need point guards. Um, it's not a deep market for point guards. Right. For starting point guards. Yeah, that trade with Denver. Um, you had okay. point guards on your roster all season long, and none of them dropped 42. Oh, that's and true. Mm -hmm. uh, he should have a future. Listen, he's still pretty young. You know, he came out of Michigan relatively early, so mm -hmm. he's still pretty young. And this is another example of how players can have second or sometimes third acts. Yeah. In the NBA. yeah. Well, the Knicks, next phase. Who we just say that they're going to play again? The Sixers, right? Sixers tomorrow. Knicks, Sixers tomorrow. We'll have to see. Fultz versus Trey, Trey Burke. Who we'll thought have, we'd have that kind of matchup? We'll have to see if Trey Burke, wanting to make sure he secures a spot in the NBA next season, outweighs the Knicks' overall <laughs> desire to tank. This is why these games can be interesting, because the coaches and the players, Jeff Hornacek is in some ways coaching for his job, right? And even if he doesn't continue with the Knicks, his record in these final months is going to be important on his overall coaching record. There's yeah. no, like, little announcer guy who comes in after his record and say, but the team was thinking. People just say, oh, his record is X and X. Yeah, I, don't, right. I know you say, you say the Knicks are tanking. I don't think that they are. I just think that they're bad. That's why they keep losing. I think when you watch the Knicks play... You don't think that they are knowing that they are not going to make the playoffs, hoping for a lower... Uh, a they're I think they're playing their best players, though, Rachel. I think organizationally, I, yes. Typically, you, when you tank, you don't play your best players. Or <laughs> I, think the, I think the Knicks in the tanking scale are ranked pretty low. I just think they're not a good team. Well, they, they, they got a late start because That's they were true. not trying to tank That's when Chris Porzingis was playing. How unfortunate for them. <laughs> the Bulls also got a late start, which That's was true. more of a mystery because they knew what they were trying to do the whole season. But the Knicks and Bulls got a later start. That being said, they have had some opportunities to catch up. The Nets, for example, are not trying to tank because it's not their pick. The Lakers didn't want to tank because they were sort of taking they a don't have their approach. Pick. They don't have their pick either. So, you know, they had some room there. I wouldn't say they're not trying to get a better draft pick. Well, bless their hearts. <laughs> Let's get to Isaiah Thomas. Speaking of the Lakers, still having issues with his hip. This this is just stinky to see. I'm sorry. I, I, you want IT to be better. You want him to be healthy. He has been excused from the Lakers to evaluate treatment options. He flew to New York last night. Brian, what more can you tell us about this? He had another MRI. God, how many, how many MRIs he's had in the last year, man? Mm. I mean, uh, he had another MRI. They sent it around to some doctors to, to evaluate it. 
between all the doctors who he's seen, all the doctors who've seen his images, all the people in his life, he's had multiple different agents in the last year. I'm sure he's talking to Floyd Mayweather <laughs> about stuff like that. He's talking to other advisors in his life. He's talking to teammates. Everybody, I'm sure, has an opinion on what he should do. This is a very difficult decision, obviously, because different doctors have advised him to have surgery, and other doctors have advised him to not have surgery. He has not had surgery, and we are now 13 months off the, well, like 12 and a half months off the initial injury, and he is not better yet. And Tracy, what's coming up this summer? Free agency, man. This has cost him a lot of money. And, you know, going into the offseason, he's not coming back this season. Going into the offseason, it's like, do we give him a nice payday or we give him, you know, a one-year deal to see how he is? Is This is... I mean, we don't know if he's going to come back this season. Obviously, it doesn't look good. Doesn't and look if good. he does have surgery and goes into his free agency and yeah, he's recovering from surgery, that's... This, this There's different problem. types of surgery. You know, Gerald Henderson had surgery last year, played for the Sixers, and has missed this entire year recovering from hip surgery. But if he has a, a more minor hip surgery, he could be theoretically back and healthy again by the start of next year. Or he could not have surgery like he didn't elect to last year. These are all the things he's dealing with. But I will have to tell you, Tracy, I can't think of another example where a player might have lost, I'm not kidding you, he might have lost a nine-figure contract. Yes. Uh, if he had been a free agent last summer when he was healthy, he would have gotten a nine-figure contract. Absolutely. And right now, I do not think he would be able to get a significant multi-year deal. It stinks. It just, I'm sorry. There's no other way to say it. It's like, it's this is very someone we all like and who has really shown so much grittiness and everything you want as a basketball fan to do. Rachel, think about this. <clears throat> He's had to deal with three teams of this injury. Great. First the Celtics, then the Cavs, now the Lakers. All those team doctors, plus all the individual doctors he's, he's talked to. I mean, I can't imagine what he's gone through trying to get himself back to the player he was a year ago when he was one of the top 15 players in the league. He made the All-NBA team last year. This is like D. Rose, man. Being on top, win MVP, and then it's just spiraling but D. Rose out. got paid. He got his money. Right. You know? From Adidas, too. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I feel bad what happened to D. Rose, but D. Rose... Right, got nine right, figures. right. Isaiah right. has never gotten his big contract, and he deserved it. Right. I mean, look, and, and again, when we have, this is what we always have to remember, when we talk about Kawhi Leonard, should he come back? Whose team, whose right. opinion? The team doctor is his doctor. Right. Who should he trust? When we talk about other players, this has been very instructive for every player in the league, right? Well, I, I went through it. I went through it with Houston, you know, uh, p playing on a bum knee. Uh, I shouldn't have been playing. Then the doctors tell me they didn't see anything. I'm hurting. Right. I love what I do. Like, I'm playing some of the best basketball of my career, but I am hurting. And I had to go away from the team doctor to, you know, seek other opinions. And I ran into a couple of doctors that said, you shouldn't be playing. My knee was, it was done. No cartilage. Yeah. And it was a really unfortunate situation for that team, which was a good team. And the one thing I would say is at least you had been paid. Yeah. So that yeah. you and then that's, you I feel bad you. for IT. How he can get a pedicure in his hotel room, I know. and you can't. And this is how we and come for a floor the hotel on the jump. Floor, the carpet. I, Thank I you very much. Floor. Coming up tonight will be the last time, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. LeBron wow. and Dwayne Wade on the court together? Could be. First, take a look at this piece. Oh, this was good. So producer Danny, producer Steve, producer Aton, they were looking around for old clips of LeBron and Wade together. Aton's like, oh, look, here's a piece Rachel did on their friendship back in 2011. I don't know what it was because it was seven years ago. You were practically living in Miami. I don't remember Rachel, it. So, uh, yeah, I, I know that it happened. <laughs> so this is going to be a surprise for all of us, but Danny says that it is relevant today. So I'm curious. Take a look. Teams often create moments.